We're back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The Central Bank of Nigeria, as you may have heard uh, last night, has directed commercial banks to dispense and receive old Nara notes as legal tender uh, across the country. The Central Bank of Nigeria gave the directive at a Bankers Committee meeting held on Sunday. Uh, according to a statement by the acting director, CBN Corporate Communications, Isa Abdul Mumin, uh, on Monday. This uh, statement was released on Monday. Now, this is coming hours after the presidency Monday evening said that the CBN had no reason to comply with the ruling of the Supreme Court on the Nara redesign policy. It stated that the president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, did not instruct the CBN governor, Gordon Emefili, and the attorney general of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, to disobey any court orders involving the government and other parties. That was what the statement is quoted as saying. Now, the Apex Bank in a statement, however, titled Old 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira Banknotes Remain Legal Tender, uh, the CBN, said the directive was in compliance with Buhari's administration's obedience uh, to court orders. I'm glad to say uh, joining us to analyze this development is a lawyer, legal practitioner, Shola Lamid. Um, Shola Lamid, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Well, the, the, the presidency released a statement last night, um, yesterday evening, saying the president had not ordered, uh, had not directed the uh, Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Aburka Malami, SAN, and the Central Bank's Governor, um, Gordon Mifflin, to disobey court order. But the question some are asking is, did the president give them the marching order to obey the court order? It's a bit confusing for some people out there. What do you think? Uh, yes, uh, the immediate the speaker of this order, president, the president need not give an order to CBN to pay the order. I, I, I was the opinion that it was too late for the president to be talking. We don't even know, we don't even know if the president to talk. If the president was giving, the CBN not would apply. But if you then understand that CBN is under the presidency, and he wanted to hear from the president, notwithstanding the order of court. And don't forget that CBN was not a party in that suit. And it was FG that was a party. No, but so, yeah. go ahead. Hello? Can I, can I go ahead? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh -huh. So, my, 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 my opinion that I already... And I knew that CBN had no choice to comply with that order. And, and, I, and I was opinion that even if they are in the condition to make the order, that will be able to be arrested and sent to prison. Because Nigeria has, was suffering, and uh, still suffering from that denial of the access to their the, the the money. So the, the order by the presidency. Uh, or the directive yesterday night was not surprising. It was not surprising. It was it was a little today. The sort of uh, might to today is what uh, you know by eleven days. It ought to have been a little bit a little bit that was given. We we'll have to comply with our order. Well, I'd also like to ask if you. I mean, according to what you said, that the CBN, uh, you know the ruling of the Supreme Court they need an extra directive maybe from the CBN or the president then what exactly uh, was responsible for the non-compliance uh, to that particular ruling from the uh, Supreme Court uh, the, no, this is like Nigeria yeah we you know all these uh, people under the employment of the, the federal government they fear their employment even the other, even the other decisions by the Supreme Court, they will still have to hear from their, their principal or the boss. Don't forget that when the issue of uh, extension came, came up, it was the president that directed that 200 nanos to be continued to, continue to be used as legal tender. So I immediately with that with that thing, the 200 nanos. So the Supreme Court is a judiciary and directed against the federal government 
which head of it is the, the, the president, who is under immunity. So the president, and even uh, from the, if you look at from the Supreme Court uh, judgment, there was a word against the, against the president that it was being, uh, it was the authoritarian and uh, it was dictator uh, that to, or not to comply with the interim order that was just granted. So the president has the choice uh, to give instruction or directive to, to the CBA. So, and the delay in non compliance was because of the non compliance job. But the president can try to move the order, although it will be it will it will be wrong in our democracy. It will be against the rule of law. It will be content that the president is under immunity. So the president, the CBI had to wait because of his job, not to fall out from the the first government and to hear from the president. All right, um, uh, um, Mr. Shalal Amid, what do you expect yes, um, to be the 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 impact of this uh, CBN or the Supreme Court's ruling or judgment on this matters um, uh, given in favor of the governors who approached it? Uh, with this uh, a, a allowance or approval for the Naira old Naira to be used side by side with the new Naira notes till 31st December. 2023. Do you expect to see uh, the cash crunch, the narrow scarcity, and the unfolding economic hardship around the country that we've witnessed? Do you expect to see it um, reduce and things get back to normal with this this, this court, um, court court judgment and the subsequent uh, directive by the Central Bank of Nigeria? Yes. If, if they comply fully, but I'm thinking about the old note. I think we should, the things should go to, uh, go, go to normal. And they will hit the, 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 the current uh, suffering of Nigeria. We, yes, I think so, we. Yes. But, you know, the, you know a, lot of, a lot of people are now, are now cautious to, to use the old notes. But they are still, but for me, I, I don't think that there's that, no, no reason to fear anything. Because if you say God was giving, and the and the and uh, the the whole note will continue to be the digital tender. So if they bring out the money, the, the whole note that's in the bank, eventually the bank. Once the money is released, all the whole note, the two hundred, the five hundred, and the, the one thousand note, if they if they if they bring them back to calculation, the the problem with it. Yes, I agree. Uh, I, I, I'm of that opinion. Anyway. Uh, okay. So, do you ex because some are saying that the um, uh, the 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 Supreme Court never addressed the issue of um, the amount of the currency in circulation. You know, and therefore, yes, the old and new narrow may live side by side, uh, but but and it could be accepted as legal tender around the country. But since a lot of people have taken their old notes back to the bank and don't have any notes at all, if the central bank decides they don't want to uh, increase the amount of money in circulation, there will still be scarcity. So do you expect in that regard now, do you expect anything, things to change significantly? Yeah, that's where I said, if there's a full compliance with that full point. You know, before, the, the money in circulation yeah, it's happening by, by, by the CBN and then the, the commercial bank. You know, your, your, the money that in your account is your own money. You have the right to it. No bank can deny you access to your money. Yeah, I agree that if the, the CBN can see a bit frustrate the, the availability of that nano, that no reason enough, enough uh, cash. To the system, but that will still be again, again, against the judgment of the court. Because the, the reason for that judgment of the court is that the policy is a, is, 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 a, is a violation of the fundamental right of citizens to their fund. The fund in the bank account, in, your, in everybody's bank account, is, is your property. Nobody can deny you how you're going to use that money. So if the if the if the CBA, the first must comply fully with 
without judgment to Supreme Court and make the money available in the, in the, system, in the, in the, in the system. So if they, they, they don't comply, that will be the problem. But I know that, like you said, from now, without the threat, it will be, it will not go to normal, it will not, it will not go to normal as it was, as it was, it was before the, the, the policy. Because they will try to proceed, because there's a benefit of this policy. That benefit, that benefit, that is with it. So they, they, they will try and they will just receive the money in circulation and then we gradually deal with it. Well, um, I'd also like to ask what you think would play out uh, following, you know, this uh, directive from the CBN, more like endorsing the ruling of the Supreme Court. Do you think that all of this would solve the cash crunch that Nigerians have been faced with for the, you know, the past months? Yeah, I said it, it depends on the CBN compliance. By releasing enough cash into the system. But don't forget the policy has been notified. They, they, they are, they are, before, the problem of the policy is that you can, they are the limit you can withdraw every, every week. The, the limit of cash, the limit of cash can withdraw every week. They are expected to do transfer for, all, for other transactions. So everything is depends on the CPM to release enough. Enough cars in the system. Without you know, even enough cars in the system, that will still be that will still be a problem. All right. Um. Uh. What 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 do you, what are your take? What's your take on on the constitutionality of um, certain governors in in Nigeria before the CBN uh, press release yesterday, uh, making statements, you know, telling their residents that the old Nara notes remain legal tender. In their uh, in their states, um, do you think there's some sort of um, treason somewhere here? You know, trying to usurp the power of the president because we are aware that um, uh, no matter what the presidency in quote says, we know that after the Supreme Court's initial, or the, sorry, the court's initial um, order, uh, the first one um, that the president on the interim, uh, yes the interim yeah injunction yes or the interim right. order that right. the president in defiance to this interim order on february 16 gave a national address a national broadcast where uh, he he insisted that uh, only the old 209 notes will be uh, accepted as legal tender whilst that uh, 500 naira will be phased out you know so the president had already said this but governors had gone ahead starting with air fire most recently uh, Babajide Samuel of Lagos State yesterday to say the legal tender, uh, the old notes remain legal tender, and anyone who bank rejects them will be shut down. So, do you think there's some sort of, some have said maybe there's some sort of treason here? Um, some governors trying to usurp the powers of the president. Uh, what, what do you say to this? Uh, the, the, the two governors, the LFI and uh, the uh, Samuel of Lagos State, they are they are the statement it is, it is it was made for to the Supreme Court judgment and order. You know, the, 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 you know, the interim order that was made. When, when there's an interim order, that means the everything the status quo remains. Because all the the the, 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 the deadline for the old note was suspended and that it remains a little tender. So their statement was made for sure to those order that was made by Supreme Court, and they were justified in making that order. And don't forget that even the, 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 the statement of the president that was contrary to the interim order, because it's because based on finding on that one, and say it was dictatorship for the for, for the for the president to say to contrary to to, to, to his order. I don't say this, I don't see no, I don't see the no, 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 no,
I think the problem is the implementation of the of the of the policy. Because if you reduce cash in the system and you do a lot of transfer, well, it will increase uh, the bank revenue, it will increase the federal government revenue, it will reduce insecurity, it will reduce corruption. But the, I think the timing for the election, and as well as the fact that even the, the limit that was given to each individual was not available. So it affects all the other sector, the former sector of the economy who, who, who rely on cash, cash transaction. The, so it, there were no, the money was not available to them. So it, 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 the implementation of that policy has, has affected the economy drastically and drastically. So for me, I believe that the, if the policy is where it is meant and then the, the cash, no matter how little as, as they said, is, 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 is available, it will be very good for the economy. But let me make the cash available. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Shalala Mead, legal practitioner, thank yeah. you so much for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Man. All right, you, uh, that's the size of that conversation. We have more discussions ahead. Of course, when we come back from our break, we'll be looking again at the bimodal voter accreditation system machines uh, and their reconfiguration of mixed reactions still trailing that. We'll be right back.